morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much to the Tiger team for inviting me to speak today um, and give some insights into West Midlands Ambulance Service. Um, thought I'd take a little bit of a different approach uh, to the session today, although I will touch on some of the business as usual activities that we do with Tiger. Um, but I thought I'd introduce some of the uh, innovations and developments that we did during the uh, COVID experience, which, which I know for the last couple of years has been a challenging time for a lot of sectors, uh, especially within healthcare. However, there have been some positive takeaways in the areas of development. I'd bring that to the table today. Yeah, a few areas to cover really. So a bit of an introduction to West Midlands Ambulance Service, a bit, a bit of a background on the emergence of COVID-19 within the service. Um, some of, of a discussion about the call demand that that we had during that time and then moving on to the recovery the business as usual activities and how we've sort of evolved a bit like it in with um Isha into some other areas of, of diversity around using the product um, and then perhaps you know some ideas for the future what where we want to go and some of the areas of innovation that we've picked up on today's session and a bit of a summary at the end there so um, without further ado, a bit of an introduction on West Mid's Ambulance Service. So um, we serve a population of about 5.6 million patients and we employ about 4,500 staff uh, covering an area of about 5,000 square miles. We respond to 4,999 calls every day. Uh, however, at the peak of the pandemic, that increased quite substantially. And uh, not very well known, but uh, we also offer patient transport services um, within the West Midlands for about 1 million non-emergency patient journeys every year. And so combined, we do cover a lot of um, the health economy of the West Midlands. For, for the time during the COVID response, we also covered the 111 uh, service for, for the West Midlands as well. So we've been a proud Tiger customer since 2012. So when we were talking about the pedigree of, of the employees of Tiger, you know, I, I feel like I've been along with that journey a little bit because um, we started with the Tiger 2020 product just really for departmental billing and tariff analysis, uh, call by call reports, anything like that. Um, but then seeing the uh, evolution of the product into Tiger Prism, you know, got, got us quite excited because we really could see the benefit of some of the add-ons, you know, the AD integration, the improved user experience, the speed of reporting. Uh, the web portal was a really big bonus for us, staying of installing applications. Um, and it really did look um, a cutting edge product and compared to, to other products that we'd seen. So yeah, we didn't hesitate really moving forward with that. So to sort of go straight into the emergence of COVID, so yes, it caught everybody by, by surprise. And uh, as we say, there was a lot of um, activities around technological change, um, and it really did allow us to push forward with a lot of initiatives that had been stalled for some time. Um, but yeah, obviously we were actively supporting the NHS frontline response to COVID, and that was the main objective for us right from the beginning. Um, we operated a regional 111 control centre, uh, call 999 services is our business as usual, call taken and dispatch. And interestingly, we recognised quite early on that we were going to be overwhelmed with calls, not just for 111, but also for 999. So we recruited did a mass recruitment drive really early on, which was helped by you know, government initiatives to um, recruit 100 additional staff for our contact centres. And that uh, really did pay dividends as we went through uh, um, the pandemic because um, that really uh, enabled us to do dual training, uh, an opportunity to dual train staff into nines and ones and flex calls between the two services as the demand increased in each one. And, and interestingly, the, the pattern was um, calls typically came through to 111 uh, at the start of the pandemic, uh, mostly due to advertising and uh, government uh, announcements, but then later migrated into the 999 as, as that um, the, the development of the pandemic got more serious. Um, and then of course admin functions, working from home and hybrid working was also a change, um, a lot more use of teams and conferences and et cetera. So yeah, there was a lot going on within 111, particularly as a front door or digital front door to, to um, services. Uh, the daily sessions were peaking at nearly a million um, impressions on their website 
and a lot of those calls did generate a lot, a lot of that um, triage does generate a call, uh, a voice call. So um, we definitely saw speaks in, uh, spikes in the activity around the early parts of March uh, coinciding with those major announcements. And this this graph is actually from the what we did 2019-20 COVID-19 response, which I put the source on the slide deck. It's quite an interesting read and just talk about how things were done, uh, including the, the spin up of the Nightingale hospitals. Um, so for bringing Tiger into the, into the story, so um, very early on, we recognised that we could really use the power of the Tiger Prism dashboards to um, get some really quick metrics uh, and reporting uh, and screenshots and, and uh, things about the uh, activity that was going on within the organisation, including um, those those early days. Um, and, you know, the beauty of the, the Tiger product is it does do some really nice um, graphical uh, representations of the data set, which you can cut and paste and, and, and include in reports and things. So it's really good from that perspective. Um, and then the options for quick dates, specific dates and real time, which I think was a, a later inclusion to the product, really helped us as an organisation because we could put that sort of data on a dashboard and have that real time um, hour by hour uh, call volumes showing on our dashboards in, in real time. A lot of people were, were liking that in the organisation. And it's, it's about getting that data quick and, and, and having it uh, presented in a way that's easy to, to, to dive. The, uh, for, from, from my team's perspective, the traf traffic and channel heat map drill downs were really essential uh, for demand profiling and trend analysis. We were able to look at days of the week, um, time of the day, and be able to give that intel back into the organisation so this is what's happening compared to historical data that we've got. Um, and this, to put this slide deck in because I think it's um, it's a good representation and, and by the way I thought I'd mention I did these screenshots a couple of days ago and we're obviously talking back historical data so I think that's the beauty of um, Tiger Prism as well is that you've got that whole repository of data to look back up for analysis if you need to. And um, the, the early part of March was our normal call volume into 111, so you can see that sort of uh, very consistent volume. But then there was all of a sudden a jump, and this coincided with a lot of the news breaking about um, calling 111 if you're returning back from certain countries. There were a number of countries that were having, I think it was Italy first, but there was a number of countries that were having, um, uh, you know, uh, alerts raised upon them, and they or the people were ringing 111 returning from holiday concerned about where, where they'd been etc and so we started to see a real sharp incline of call volume coming into to 111 and we and it was almost uh, at a point that it was creating a linear um, call profile so what it enabled us to do really quickly was to um because because our inbound lines are sip uh, trunks we were able to quickly scale up those with our provider and the bottom graph actually shows the overspill of the um of the, the primaries at the top and the secondaries at the bottom and you can see that really over the, the course of the two sites um you know we were hitting nearly well 450 per site so nearly 900 trunks of, of inbound calls uh on, on that 13th uh, of march so it really was a, a very demanding challenge we had to invoke a number of um, measures internally, we were doing IVR enhancements for, for menu options to really kind of direct patients the right way. Um, one, one of the announcements that was uh, called soft guard was about um, fit notes. We, uh, patients were told to ring 111 for fit notes. That wasn't something that would be catered for within our dial plans, etc. So yeah, there was, there was a lot of uh, adopting to, to uh, that call volume coming through. But, but Tiger was able to give us some intelligence about that. So moving forward, it's interesting. There's, there's a lot of comparisons with Ian's um, presentation because we do also use the alerts kind of fraud monitoring as well. Not not in the sense of it's uh, financial fraud, but um, the, the 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 number of calls that we would get perhaps for repeat from repeat callers and things like that. 
and um, call demand and trunk utilization we've already mentioned actually was really useful during COVID as well but we do it all the time it's always useful to know if you've if you've got enough trunk head headroom room uh, for core volumes uh, fault diagnostics a great go-to tool for, for that and directory analysis we've integrated our tiger in with our switchboard and uh, telephone platform and pretty much seamlessly synchronizes for us and uh, always ad hoc investigations which are really a really powerful tool to use and um, so yes yeah, so moving a bit more into alert triggers these are some of the alert triggers that we've set up um, probably not quite as many rules as Ian but um, we we do rules for cause over five pounds as an example cause over 60 minutes directory inquiry international call speaking clock um, some useful things for denial of service that we've put into the system um, that would be repetition of calls in a short period of time and uh, tr trunking activity you know we've got a lot of resilient serv services and trunks within our estate and it's useful to know if there's uh, inactivity on those trunks and might be, might be indicative of a problem and um, yeah what, what else have we used tiger prison for so um, cqc or care quality commission um, visit NHS organisations from time to time to assess their capabilities uh, and one of the things that was commented on from our, one of our recent CQC visits a couple of years ago was um, they were asking for some information on supervi supervisory communication within our control rooms and our traditional contact centre solutions wasn't really providing us that information but we were able to run reports to the extensions of the supervisors and provide that information and turn that around really quickly and which, which was you know impressed the cqc and gave them the data today they wanted really in a nice uh usable format um, but we also use it for nuisance caller reports top 40 mobile user reports um trend analysis as i've discussed and real-time traffic and, and call volumes and and there's a little i'm not sure how clear it is but there's a little graph on the side and we can sort of see then trends and and profiles and we can share those and I think one of the most recent ones we've been engaged with our patient transport services because their core profile has definitely changed um, post the pandemic uh, and you know it was really working with those supervisors to say this is how you need to understand this is how um, your patient patient um, interactions have changed within the platform and this is where uh, how, we, how we can give you the tools and reports to help with that automated reports um, so looking forward to the future roadmap uh, with tiger and, and um, we are big users of office 365 microsoft teams um, so i was watching that section this morning with keen interest uh, i think i do think there's there's definitely benefits in in using the tools that we've got in tiger for that monitoring of of ms teams um it's more alert monitoring i can never get enough of alerts and um the, the transition of course for the, for the servers uh, operating systems is also on our roadmap for server and software upgrades and security uh, patching etc uh, and potentially the future maybe cloak even going to the cloud host solution uh, as, as a potential so in summary uh the Tiger Prism has really been a go to go to tool for us. Uh, it's continued to demonstrate really high value to the organisation, even under the unprecedented circumstances that we've that we've been put under. Um, but actually, that was completely took us by surprise how useful the Tiger tool was during that that phase. To be to be fair, because these things were, were were unexpected by everybody. Um, it's involved with our changing platforms. So during the course of the last few years, we've migrated from the CS1000 to the Avaya Communication Manager platform. Um, very simple and easy transition, and the the Tiger team really helped uh, hold our hand through that process and validate the data. And uh, all our historical data is completely intact as well. And um, yeah, scheduled reports, dashboards, alerting always remain the core benefits for us at West Mid's Ambulance. Um, and one of the things I'd you know, really like to see in the future, uh, I'm happy to discuss this uh, with, with yourself, Caroline, is um, using the platform to pull out insights that perhaps I'm not looking for. And I think that's uh, something where we're looking more towards now uh, with some of our other solutions is that they they spot things that we haven't spotted. But yeah, I'd welcome, welcome a discussion on that at some point. Thank you.
Thanks, Chris. As you say, it, it's always what you're not looking for that kind of comes over to the forethought sort of as you start to delve into data. It's one of those systems, isn't it, that you start to get lost in the next piece of information that you can find from the first piece of information that you've gathered. But the mind blowing statistics there through through the COVID period, and whilst it's not one that any one of us want to to revisit, it's certainly one that I think we can learn and seeing how the Tiger Prism system has been able to support you with that infrastructure behind the scenes and certainly not knowing what the actual question you might need to, to respond to in another six, nine months, but know that you've got the data there and be able to, to access it in a way that's giving you the meaningful information you need there and then to be able to respond to it is, is fantastic. It's, again, heartwarming to know, and I know your story is no different to any of the other emergency services at that particular period of time. We, we hear very... <laughs> completely different poles apart from it, but we hear very similar stories from our retail organisations for argument's sake of similar kind of thing. Stores close, everyone moves to telephony. And uh, again, we saw a, a, an absolute increase in the statistics and the, and the data and the impact that that has on the infrastructure and how quickly people had to react. So everyone had their own time pressures, but certainly I think the NHS faced the biggest amount of that and we, we, we shouldn't forget that one at all. Um, we had one question that you absolute perfect timing answered in your summary in terms of what voice platform you're, you're using for all your statistics. You couldn't have timed it better in terms of the question coming in and you giving us the answer for that one. So thank you. Your, your telepathic side is certainly working well this morning with that one. Um, again, I know you don't you won't mind us uh, promoting yourself in terms of connectivity because you're an absolute wealth of information for us historically, and that's no different. So I really would encourage you to, to connect in with Chris. He's, he's always got some insightful information going on above the estate. But um, we have one more question. Do we? No, we do not. Oh, OK, a um, question from Rob asking about what your team's journey actually looks like at the moment. Is it on the internal voice side of things? Is it NHS Net? Is it wider side for IMP? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Actually, it's quite quite topical. Actually, from from Rob because it's it is something that we've been discussing in in uh, internally. But uh, the moment Teams is just an internal tool. Um, we we are um, looking into a hybrid model, so mm -hmm. we would use our telephony platform as the as the gateway out for for external telephony, but still use the Teams client as a front end. Um, I think that probably fits well with us because we've put heavy investment in our on-prem telephony solution uh, mm -hmm. for our five nines resilience. Um, uh, but, I, but I do recognise that Teams has become a go-to tool for a lot of the uh, admin functions of the organisation. And um, at the moment, it does seem a bit, bit clunky that they've got um, a, a tool internally for uh, telephony, but also a tool for external for telephony, which is the the, the desk phone. And so, I think um, yeah, to answer Rob's question, I think a hybrid it seems to be a popular opinion at the moment on that one. Yeah, couldn't disagree with you at all on that one. It's certainly something that we see a, a vast amount of our estates dipping toes in at some stage or another. As you rightfully say, there's a vast amount of licensing out in the field on some of these estates with Microsoft. So it's a compliment to have it within the estate, but the investment and the um, redundancy that you get from resilience, you get from that legacy platform that you've invested in is still one to, to be reckoned with essentially. So that hybrid model does seem to be a very popular one. And again, something that we, we can work with you on, on quite where the, the insights are useful for you and how best to connect in and get the data for that. Mm -hmm.